we in the on, I'm in the online coaching space. So I love my job. I got the best job in the world. I help people make money, right? People be hating on niggas in the coaching space, which is hilarious to me, right? Because you got to think about it like this. Everybody talking about they can Google this shit that we know, that we teaching. If you can Google it, why the fuck you not rich yet? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you can YouTube it, why you not rich mm -hmm. yet? And then the second follow-up to that is, if you could, how you going to Google and YouTube some shit that you don't even know that you don't know? Right. You right, got shit right. that we know we don't know. Mm -hmm. I know I don't know about real estate. I know I don't know about taxes. What about the shit you don't know you don't know? You cannot Google that. Mm -mm. That's the reason why we got to try to give people direction. And I think about it all the time. Like, what happens if I stop coaching and, and helping people, like, do, do their thing? Like, do what I've done. I'm already been past it. And I'm showing people how to do it. I'm teaching from behind me. Imagine if I stop doing it, then it's going to be only the niggas who really not about that right. teaching everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then what? Now you got nobody that's actually legitimate teaching everybody shit, and you got people literally going and fucking up the whole industry, fucking up the whole market. That's what happened with the, the rental car shit. I'm teaching people the rental car shit. I'm like, look, man, start with a couple economy cars, work your way up. Mm -hmm. Niggas are seeing podcasts and they going out and buying 30 cars in their personal fucking credit, fucking up their <laughs> debt to income ratio. Now you got five fucking C8s and now people on Toro with a C8 for $100 a day. <laughs> now nigga can't now anybody who had a CA who was renting shit for a reasonable cost three to five hundred dollars a night this over bro you better take that shit down to a hundred because they fell the market mm -hmm. so now they can't afford the notes they crash and whatever the case may be so it's all but people like myself I've been doing it for going on nine years now so at, at the end of the day I'm gonna still be around but if I say if I stop coaching what the fuck gonna be left on the internet some bullshit, bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> so I'm, bullshit. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stick it out even though it's risky Describe myself in two words, rich and unemployed. These stones cost two birds. Let it count it when she bored. Deposit hit chicks, clearing ace. Nothing void. I know that ain't my ex calling. Null and void. Where we going? Money going. All right, welcome Money to the Rich and Unemployed Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Dupuson, aka Finesse. Before we get started, make sure you guys check out the Patreon for behind the scenes content and the exclusive content that hasn't come out on YouTube yet. Also, check out the merch, www.richandemployed.net. I got this green set ready right now all right so i got a very special guest today and i'm saying he's special because this ain't his first rodeo on the show it's been about two years Go ahead, introduce yourself man yeah that's <laughs> nice yeah. that was two years ago man it's like two years ago b yeah man i go by mitch man i'm push man mitch on instagram world renowned man number one rental car program in the world number one rental car business in the nation cars mm -hmm. la houston mm -hmm. new york wherever you need cars i got them wherever you need money i got it that's what mm -hmm. i'm really on for real i'm just here to help people make money Word. who come from where i come from where we don't have no money no money that's it now two years bro you didn't leveled up in two years bro um at first it was just the car rental space mm. um since then this is from what i know Okay. Um, more cars, uh, two cribs, one one big boy crib. One is the other one is still. You know what I'm saying? It I don't ain't know. Light. It's a lot of square footage. Yeah, you know I mean, it ain't light. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> you got two cribs, uh, mm -hmm. more cars. Now you're teaching more as well. Like, yes, sir. I'm talking about you. How many millionaires you didn't create, man? Uh, over 13 documented. I mean, some people don't be trying to tell me. They don't want to give me credit, man. It's yeah. a lot of niggas you don't, that you know yeah, yeah, yeah. that they hear because of your boy. And shout out to them for doing their thing. Because it's not me making them. Mm -hmm. It's just me being a catalyst, just helping people figure out like how to become who they really is. Mm -hmm. That's really what it's all about. So I'm, I'm happy for everybody. You know, like 13 is not a light number. You know, nah. For one, you becoming a millionaire, and then two, actually creating other millionaires from the shit that you know, the knowledge that you show. Know. That's that's you know, I respect that. I, I salute that, bro. Preach. And, they all, they and always ask who the first person you put on. First person you put on is yourself. Yeah, for sure, you know for sure. I mean? And then you go, you know, what I'm saying, feed the the people. That's it. But some people, uh, I don't know what it is why people gatekeep information. Like you've always been a nigga that just, you know, what I mean, hey, I like, actually get it though. Mm. I get it. What is it? Then? I get why people gave keep information. Because they don't want to surpass you. It's not, it's not even that. Mm -hmm. It's deeper than that. Like when you give information out, man, honestly, you 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 watch you water it down. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. when you give a play out, you yeah. water it down by teaching it to people who are not really gonna execute the right way. Mm -hmm. So I understand why people don't want to tell everybody. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, but even despite that, I'm still going to do it just because I got to talk to 100% of the people to find a 5% that I can help. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that's just is what it is. I'm talking to 100% it's of nuts, the people though. to 5% of the people I'm going to help. That's it. Because it's only 5% that's going to actually execute on the information. Mm-hmm. So it's not a problem. We can give out free game all day. I could teach you how to make a million dollars, get a million dollar loan, yeah. get your own mansion. I can teach you all of that mm-hmm. right away. But it don't matter if you ain't going to go execute on it. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, we talk about mentorship so much because... It's really not about the information. Niggas can Google anything, right? Yeah. Research anything. But the problem is you ain't going to have the confidence to go do none of that shit. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. need somebody to borrow that confidence. Mm-hmm. So that's what borrow a mentor that is for. confidence. Yeah, you just be in a mirror. So I see a nigga I like, like you. I'll be like, man, you know what? I can't do this podcast shit, yeah. bro. And if you tell me this is how you did it uh-huh. and you should do it like this, I believe you can do it. I'm going to go try it. Yeah. Now, if I just go on YouTube and look at it and say, man, this look like I could do that. I'm going to go back to work. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, it's different when you got somebody in the mirror. That's why I like ATL so much, bro. Atlanta's city of kings. Bro. Oh, my God. I love Lord it here, bro. Lord have mercy. I love it here. There's no other city to where that's just full of entrepreneurs. And it's a circle that just just give out information. Or, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, willing to help each other. Like, oh, I need sure. you for this. Oh, boo, boo. It's just a support system that just, I, I ain't seen nowhere else. It's dope. Let me ask you a question. So you see, so you see, it's a lot of us who work together. What are you? What are the negative things about working with too many people? Yeah, um, the negative things yeah. about working. Uh, I would say that it kind of it kind of wears you out for one because you have a bunch of people trying to pull you in different directions. Some okay. people feel entitled to you doing things for them. Mm. Um, sometimes you might have the wrong person around you. It might be a scammer around you. You know what I'm saying? Like you mm. didn't even know, but you've been associated with this nigga for months. And mm. then you find out, oh damn, this nigga was fucking bullshit. That might be the biggest jaw right uh-huh. there. Mm. It's like, and then and then the craziest part about that is you got to play ball anyway. So you can't be the one to out him. Mm. You, that's can't, the, you can't. You know what I'm saying? Can't. You can't. You and can't. It, and it's the, that's the toughest part about all of this uh. shit. We all affiliated with each other. So if somebody fucking up and they get you know, put into the, the public eye with it, mm. they going to say it's all of us. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. the hardest part about it. You, But you can't definitely be the one to out them because now you a hater. Right, right, right. Now you a hater. <laughs> now you, now a, you hater. a hater. So it's, it's, it's a gift and a curse. I feel like Atlanta is the best place for networking. It's the best place for people leveling up and helping mm-hmm. each other. But it's also the best place to get caught up in some shit that you ain't even know you was going to be involved. Because everybody is somebody, bro. It's, <laughs> it's a new entrepreneur. It's a new brand every fucking day. And they want to either do business, join the network, or whatever it is. It's just a new person every day. You don't even have any type of track sheet of these people. Right. They just come out of nowhere and like, yo, bro, I do this, I do this, woo, 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 woo. And just because he know uh, one person in the group, it it uh it solidifies him. Like, oh, all right, well, shit, I can fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? And you know, trap trap might fuck with him. All right, well, That's cool. crazy. So how do you how do you pick and choose who you gonna fuck with? Dog, I'm I'm real selective, bro. Um, <laughs> Like, listen, listen, I'm very selective on like who I fuck with. Like if I, I, I gotta really fuck with you on outside of that shit. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? I hoop with you. Right. So we could have conversations outside of fucking entrepreneurship, right. like all right. the, outside of cap. You know what I'm saying? We can talk about women. We can talk about just shit. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like Ty, you know what I'm saying? I met him on some entrepreneurship, but I talked to him outside of that. All right. David Shands, it, it's just people that I, I find a genuine connection with and I feel like they don't just want something from me. Right. You know what I mean? It'd be just people that just off the gate, Yo, I think we should woo-woo. Like, damn, like, let's chop it up. Let me be on what the fuck I am. I'm, I'm big on that, man. I'm not even trying to, like, I like to do business and collaborate with people, but I don't want to work with nobody that I don't like. Right. I okay. literally don't. Because you know what? In reality, like, I've been doing business now, eight figures now. So when you get into a business, that, let's say me and you partner up and do a deal. Mm-hmm. And we not that tight. <laughs> mm-hmm. Me and you not that tight. We mm-hmm. cool. Like, I, I, we know each other in passing, but then we do a business deal that we make millions of dollars together that we got to split. Uh-huh. Let's just say me and you had a bank that we went through, and the bank is telling me some funny shit, and I communicated to you that it's going to be a certain amount of time that we get this money. Yeah. Now the bank played with me. Yeah. Because we wasn't that tight, our relationship going to be in shambles. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I got to be like, yo, the bank told me 60 days, man. They said it was going to be a reserve on it. Now they're talking about 90 days. Now you think I done scammed you. Yeah, this nigga got a platform. He yeah, go on a platform yeah. talking about, <laughs> yo, Bushman, Mitch did this. But that's why I can't 
I don't try to do business with nobody that I don't have an organic relationship with that I don't like. Mm-hmm. That I know that we can have a tough conversations mm-hmm. and we can have a cool conversation. But that's the real big thing. I don't consider nobody cool with me, my friend, mm-hmm. if we can't have a tough conversation. Mm-hmm. If you mm-hmm. get if you get upset with me, like when I gotta be real with you, yeah, we not really that cool for mm-hmm. real. Mm-hmm. So I don't consider you no friend. So even if you was mad, I don't even give a damn. A I'ma just slide because we was never really that cool. But if I can have that tough conversation, like yo, let's 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 talk about it yeah, real quick. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be everything, not all glitz mm-hmm. and glamour. Mm-hmm. But that's the problem with you know this this digital era, social media. It's the human connection is missing, and we think we can say anything behind the keyboards. And mm-hmm. then when you go in person, people can't even talk to each other. Can't even speak. Up. So my thing is, if I don't like you, we ain't got to do no business together. Well, we can be cool. I'm always going to play yeah, ball. cordial. I'm always going to shake hands. I'm always yeah. going to big up you. But when you come over talking about, yo, Mitch, let's do this, let's do that, I don't even entertain it. Yeah, what do you say? Like, uh, you do you like, all right, bet. Because it's fake, though. You know, mm-hmm. what What do everybody do whenever they see, oh, we gotta leak, we gotta, we gotta get together, we gotta be. Get- oh my God. I'd be just like this, man. Come on, bro. We don't even gotta do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I just say what's up. Like, how's your family? Everything cool? Yeah. yeah. We don't gotta do no business. Like, mm-hmm. But that's just say what's up when we see each other. But that's the problem though. People really feel like they they be th- I be thinking they want they they think I want to do it. Yeah. I want to work with them. I be like, oh, I don't want you to be confused. I don't want to do no business with you. Let's just you know pound slide out. I be in and out of any of the. All they these take events. that as disrespect too, man. They might look at you a little funny now. Go talk to you to buy your back. Like, bro, we ha- we make we have a choice in life. I can make right. a decision. Like, I don't have to do business. Right. I don't have to be a friend. But people take that as a negative way. Like, yo, listen, the more that we climb up the ladder, the less people that we have to connect with. You know I mean, when you was at the bottom, it's cool, like, ah, you could try shit out. But when you get high up the ladder, like, you got a lot of shit to lose. That's the only difference. Every Everything has changed when you got something to lose. Yes. Every decision, you, like, niggas will be, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you on this, John, yo. Niggas will try you on the fighting shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? When you got something to lose, you ain't you ain't trying to throw hands like nah, that. No, no, nah, no. Nah. You ain't trying to even get into nah. the gunplay. You ain't trying to get into none of that. You like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm trying to go home. I, mm-hmm. I got it. I got some shit going on right, now. Right. This person ain't got nothing to lose, so mm-hmm. I'm not arguing with this person. Like I be somebody might get the tussle on me. I be like, you got it. You the toughest guy in the gym. Yeah, yeah, for Do sure. Your thing. I'm not doing it. back in the day, bro. I, I'll I'll let you see what time looks. Mm-hmm. I ain't got nothing to lose. Same thing go with these. When you got women, you dating women, you gonna be more selective. Mm-hmm. When you got shit to lose. If you ain't got nothing to lose, you could date any joint. You could date the OnlyFans joint, porn joint. You don't give a damn. You like, huh? What I'm gonna do? I got I got $25 in the bank. But when you got a couple million dollars in the bank and you got a reputation, you got a brand, mm-hmm. now you are gonna be more selective and care about who you associate yourself with. That's just the reality. So mm-hmm. yeah, nah, when you got everything to lose, it everything changed. So that's even the business shit. Mm-hmm. I ain't doing some I, I done did it, I already been through it. I ain't got I done did partnership deals with people, they done took thirty thousand out of my bank. We got a, a mutual bank account. Dude took, I said, you entitled to half of everything I put in this account. Boy, take everything out of that joint. Calling him. Yo, what's up? He ain't answering. All right, I call his other phone. He ain't answering. Hit him on the gram, on the gram phone call. You know, mm-hmm. that's the mm-hmm. last, last, you hit him on the gram call. <laughs> hit him Yo, on what's poppin'? I'm just trying to, look, and the only reason I was trying to hit him, it wasn't about the money being in the, going from the account. Mm-hmm. It was about me trying to put more money in the account. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, yo, I couldn't get in there because they had like these these questions, you know, security questions that mm-hmm. he he set up. So I don't know them. Mm-hmm. So I had to go to the bank. So I couldn't get in touch with him. So I went to the bank and, you know, I talked to him. I said, look, I just got to get on my online bank. And I, they asked me security questions. I don't mm-hmm. know. Long story short, <laughs> why did, they said, oh, it's no problem. So I'm waiting in there. They fixing it. And I said, you know what? Look, how much? What's the balance on the account? And I ain't even think nothing. It, it, it was like two hundred something dollars. I was like. Two hundred some dollars. I said, "There's no way it's two hundred dollars in here." <laughs> and I put sixty G's in this account. Yo, y'all. what do you do? Like, you know, niggas is from the streets. What do you do in situations like that when, like, niggas try you? Yeah, you know I mean, like, we got shit to lose. Yeah, you know I mean, we got a name, we got a brand. You, you don't want to just pull up on a nigga and punch him out. You don't want to pull out a strap on a nigga. It's a whole different. It's a whole different life now. Yeah, you know I mean, it's when different. you got shit to lose. So how I see it, it's it's a few ways you can see it, but in that particular situation. I looked at the ball. He he haven't been posting. He looked like he was going bald up top. I was like, maybe he he about to die <laughs> or he's sick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and he did that. He ain't know how to talk to me because yeah. we wasn't that tight. So we couldn't have a conversation. That's why he wasn't answering me mm-hmm. because cool. Lost. I mean, that's what I'm assuming why he wasn't answering me. We mm-hmm. could have had a tough conversation because he just robbed me for real, for real. Uh-huh. But now you got the situation of what do I do? Do I retaliate on some on that type time? 
And then what I'm going to get for it? I ain't going to get the money back. I know he don't got the cheese. Mm. So my thing is, close the account. You learn, you take that lesson and you move on from it. You know, that's how, you know, the only way to get to the M's is to go through the L's. So that was one of my L's. I learned to make sure I go different when I go into partnerships. Mm -hmm. It was a good lesson. It was a $60,000 lesson. Mm -hmm. It's cool. I can live with it. I ain't, you know. What adjustments do you make from that? I mean, plenty. I mean, first of all, whenever you do a partnership deal, just make sure you don't get them access to the account when y'all not tight like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you don't even got to give up. Just only put his part into that account. Yeah. And not just put my part in my account. Just don't merge. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's a couple of things immediately. And then just, just making sure you more... I'm, I'm more cautious on when I try to yeah. deal with people and partner up. Like, cause me, I'm a friendly dude. Like I, mm. I, I just feel like all of us can make money together. Right. I really feel like that. Mm. And like, when it comes to my friends, I'm like, hey, you ain't, you, I'm literally not ever going to call you my friend if we can't make money together. Mm. We ain't friends. We know each other. I can know, love and respect you, but we ain't friends if we can't make chicken together. Because what would be a reason why you can't make money with your homie? You hate me. No, what, what would be the only reason for real? Ooh. The real reason is he incompetent. Or he, oh, he's somebody oh, you can't do oh, shit with. Okay, okay. Oh, I can't bring him into this type of situation. Why is that even my friend? You feel me? That's how I am as an adult. We got choices to make. Like now, we man, I'm 34. I'm, I, what the hell I'm hanging with niggas who incompetent, irresponsible, right, don't know right, how to right, talk, right. don't know how to present themselves. Like we make the choice to hang with who we want to hang with. Very true. And I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to be an old ass 40 year old nigga hanging with a nigga who can't come and do a business deal with me. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Fuck all of that, man. Like if you ain't, if we can't make money together, you ain't my friend. I know you. I love you. I say what's up to you. Peace, man. I hope you do good, but it's just mm -hmm. not going to be with me. You feel me? It ain't, it ain't no hate either. Yeah. I got me thinking about some of my friends. But yeah, no, it, happen, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the crazy thing about the bull, like, you know me, I'm a, I'm a classy guy. So just talking about the situation, I never name drop. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put bull out or nothing like that. The bull, right? The bull who took the money, he's still underneath all my posts. He like comments, oh. shit, watching my lives. And then like some John that I know, she going to hit me talking about, oh, you know, she telling me this crazy rumor that had to be made up by a person who don't even know me. So I was just like, who you heard that from? And then it turned out to be that same bull. So now, not only did you get me from my chicken, you down here hating and spreading mm -hmm. rumors and shit, yo. Mm -hmm. So I thought about exposing them for a minute. Then I said, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna not go, I ain't gonna stoop down to people that, level. That be, that's still my issue, bro. Like transitioning in from like the street life to mm -hmm. like business. I can't handle everything like I used to, you know what I mean? I can't, you know, like right. I had to really be cautious and think of like, okay, what is the, the the proper move. What is the what would the businessman do? Yo, you know, like, because it's it's all a temporary feeling though. That's kind of how I think about it. Like even with the money being gone, I I thought about it like I bought me a watch or some shit like that. Sixty. Yeah. I had to change my brain around the how I thought to, you about. You got to trick yourself. It. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like it's a temporary emotion. All of that shit is this too shall pass. Like it don't matter if I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I might be happy as a fuck for a minute, but that's going to be going in a minute. Yeah, I'm stressed, same shit. I'm worried about this money shit. I'm going to be cool in a little minute. So mm -hmm. my thing is just to remember that whenever I feel that and that I do got shit to lose. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm fortunate. So boy, that might be the most money the boy ever get in his, mm -hmm. his life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He, I feel like he had more chicken before, but you know, you never know, bro. These, they be, everybody be capping, but. Man, I had a situation where a guy did a deal with me, and um, he was like, "Yeah, yeah." Uh, I was like, "Yeah, well, give me, give me the, give me the stuff. I'm gonna go do the podcast tonight. Like, I'm gonna do a deposit, see the money in the morning." I do the podcast. The morning comes. He's like, "Ah, I can't pay you until next week." I said, "What you mean? The guy just did the podcast. What are you talking about next week?" And in my mind, I'm like, "I'm gonna fuck this nigga up, bro. Like, you playing with me, bro? Like, what are you talking about? You finna pay me next week? That's not what we agreed on." And I had to think, like, "Yo, you can't." Think like that no more. Right. It ain't even enough money to even move like it that. It ain't even. Yeah, you know I mean, some some shit be the principle though. It's the principle, and, right? And, and and that's what I had to work on. The print. Just like yo, y'all really think y'all can just do whatever, but you know you just gotta move different, man. I got I got got a couple times, bro. I'm gonna be real. I like to talk about that stuff because people look at me and they just like yo, boy got like this. Is how people view. I feel like they view me mm -hmm. when they be like yo, the boy Mitch, he got everything. Like he got yeah, whips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got he got everything. And I'd be like, man, I'm going through everything y'all go through. Fucking right. Bro, I got, I remember when we was, before the verification shit was a play, yeah. I paid motherfuckers 25000 to verify my shit. And, and boy, God got and they got me. Like, they got me. 
Um, I ain't even going to name drop them. I'm lawyered <laughs> up. I'm going to get my chicken, though. I'm lawyered up on them. It's contractual. We oh Gucci. But I got 25 Gs for that just to make sure, you know, I got the articles, all the things that everybody was doing. Mm-hmm. And the people, you know, they came through a good um, reference. You feel me? Uh-huh. And um, I, I shot them the 25 Gs. Um, I was verified for like, you remember I got verified before the I verified situation. So I got that. verified, but that was after two years already when I paid. I paid them two years before that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so long story short, um, they come through and, and then they verify me in an unethical way that wasn't supposed to be done. And they asked me, yo, I can get this done, um, but it might be taken or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Just gave my 25 G's back. And he did it anyway. Mm-hmm. So, and then it got verified for like maybe like two weeks and then they unverified my job. But either way, so that was another way I got got right there. Mm-hmm. And you know, the trading shit, everybody got killed in the trading job. Oh my job. God, can we talk about that? Yeah, we can talk about whatever so for me because I'm. that's what I, I'm here to do. A, you took a major loss. Huge, um, bro. Huge. Are you, you okay? You comfortable saying the amount? Um, I'll say the amount that I invested. So I invested in 300,000. And... Um, it was supposedly more that I lost, but 300K is what I put in that joint. And well, um, you say supposedly, like the 300 made some so, money. Or so and- basically, it was. So this, this I'm going to tell all the lessons in this. So mm-hmm. we invested into the uh, some shit that was supposed to. Um, it, how we were sold on it is that it's a person that's trading on our behalf. It was a bot. Right? But it was a. Then you find out later it's a bot. Regardless of whatever it is, I know folks who got paid out from it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was comfortable throwing my chicken in there. The minimum when I got in that joint, it was it was a three piece. Mm-hmm. The cool. minimum was three. The minimum when I came through was three. Ooh. You feel me? So a lot some people was coming at at a dub at fifty at yeah, a hundred. Yeah, I was about in there at a fifty. Yeah, I came in that joint at a three piece, and you know, you know, and 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 this is how I look at it. So I took that like when I try to pull my cheese out is before it folded down and all of that, right? But before I, I try to take my cheese out. They, they, it didn't come out. This is years now. So now we years out of it now. But long story short, I went. I was about to buy a crib, and I, when I'm buying a crib, I had to put down four hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. And I was like, the only reason I pulled the chicken out of the account is so I can just use that cash mm-hmm. instead of using my cash that I got just chilling. Mm-hmm. So I go pull the cheese out, and they never come. It's like it say it's twenty business days. Twenty business days pass, and I'm like, yo, where is this chicken? All my peoples who enter, they telling me, yo, it's, it's cool. It's going to come out. Da, 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 da. Long story short, it's it's another two years or so. I don't know. It's not two years. It's probably like a, a year now. Um, and I never get it. So long story short, not only did I fuck up the three, but I, I bought the crib with 400 something cash out of my pocket that I thought was going to be replaced by the three. Mm-hmm. So now I done spent seven something, 750 mm-hmm. just at one time. Mm. You feel me? Mm. So that was an L. But I like to talk about that because, like I said, when people look at me, I don't take no losses. Yeah, everything. Oh, but I'm always see. I'm always gonna be straight though, mm. <laughs> because I'm a different type of bull. So I'm mm. a hustler, and I'm gonna always make sure I do my thing. But at the same time, I was uncomfortable as a motherfucker. So I was in a position where I was uncomfortable. Like how much money you had then after you spent that. The three how much I had four. left? Period. Yeah, it's it's hard to say because you gotta you gotta put take my assets. Let's not put assets like yeah. That's liquid. what I'm saying. So it's it's different for me. So I'll be having car like money parked in a whip, and I can just sell it and then just take the money. That's yeah. what I did. Uh-huh. I like I was just like all right, fuck it. I'm gonna just sell a Bentley and a Rafe, and I sold them. And I just took my cheese back. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. And I was right back with the with the four. Yeah, <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. But I ain't had other three. Yeah. But I had I had other cheese. But it's it's not about that. So now you got to take into account like the what I was supposed to do with the four, mm-hmm. the original four. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You can't even put you can't like you owe every time you go spending some money like. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro. Every time you go to Mr. Brady, like, now, damn, I took that phone. I was yeah. so uncomfortable, bro. And 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 it, and it just, I was, it's just the least amount of money I had so long. Uh-huh. And I was just like, damn, this is uncomfortable as a mm-hmm. motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And I and I had I gotta keep my other whips. Yeah. Not only just because the shit that I drive, but the just, just to, you know, keep make sure my rental car is going out doing their thing. 
And I was like, if I sell any more of these motherfuckers, my sleep gonna be empty. <laughs> yeah, you gonna be pushed, man. Miss nah, man. you feel me? <laughs> so I just had to get back on my gorilla grind, man. And I got creative with it and I, I bounced back. But let's let's talk about that that grind because I I, I witnessed some of it. Like mm. um I knew when y'all took that loss, and then I seen the aftermath of it. Like you went on like a crazy run. Like you mm. just was like nonstop. I lives. feel like I'm still on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, <laughs> like this shit, you never came down. Like, right. it was just live after live after live, challenge after challenge. Like, you just was like, yo, what the fuck is this nigga on? Man, I was doing whatever I had to do to get back right. So, and it wasn't like, it wasn't like I had to do nothing crazy. I just had to just be on grind mode. Yeah, like, it yeah. wasn't no time. Like, normally we, we might work and then we might go take a trip to Bali. Yeah. We might go take a trip to Miami. It wasn't no more trips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was it was go time, and 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 me and everybody like yeah. everybody who was around me was feeling that one. So um, and you know I just had to get just get back in my mold that I was at before you know where I had my first six figures. Like I would just had to act like I really had nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had money, mm -hmm. but I felt like I ain't had nothing. That's mm -hmm. so I and I lived like I ain't have nothing, but it was cool. I had I got assets that that bring in good returns. So. One of the things I end up buying that four hundred thousand dollar credit when I put that in money down that that paid me seventy thousand a month. Mm -hmm. That was a great investment. Mm -hmm. My other crib we talk about in midtown that paid me about twenty to thirty thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Very good profits on that job. So that one got me back up. Um, I was able to scale my brand and make my business brand name blow up nationally. So right now, if anybody Google's who I am, you don't even got to Google my name. You can just Google rental car business coach. I'm number one in the nation. You mm -hmm. feel me? Mm -hmm. So um, I just it, it made me level up mm -hmm. and take my craft more serious and get better at doing what I do. So what I do is I make people make money. That's mm -hmm. my job. Mm -hmm. If I can get you to make money, I don't got, I'm not talking about millions, just literally to know that you can work for yourself mm -hmm. and make money and then it's a doubles game. Mm -hmm. And that's what I teach. And that's why I got so many people becoming millionaires, so many people become 100,000 heirs, and it's just being consistent mm -hmm. and showing them actionable steps with blueprints behind it. But that's what I did. So I got real good at it, promoted it, marketed it. Now I'm number one in the nation when it comes to the rental car business coach. So there's a lot of people that you're gonna meet that's doing it and yeah. shout out to them, keep doing y'all thing, keep pushing the culture. But um, yeah, I'm number one for sure. <laughs> Keep pushing the culture. So it's safe to say that. Not for sure. You needed to take that loss because no, hell no, 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 no. no. Let me tell y'all something right now. Let's let's be clear. I'm not one of them folks who be like, <laughs> oh, when they ask you if you got any regrets, and they be yeah. like, I wouldn't be the person. I am. Fuck all of that. <laughs> regrets. I regret that. I regret a lot of shit, but that. I but didn't need to take that it, loss. Look what it did for you, though. Thank God. Look what it did for you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm, it turned it turned the grind up a thousand percent. It did, but you know what I mean. So I need my summer back. Right and there, you was a little you know? comfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. That is true. But I ain't need that. I think I would have turned up. It's like it's like all you I had it. to do was buy another whip. Yeah, just buy another <laughs> whip that would turn me up. So yeah. I learned that from one of my mentors too. So like anytime. You start to feel complacent, you just make a large purchase. Like, so me, you know, I got a watch oh. collection too now. So I'll go drop, go give me an AP, go give me a Rolex, something crazy, mm -hmm. something that I don't need to be buying. Yeah. But it's going to make me say, oh, damn, I just spent that. Let me go Let super me go harder. That's all I be needing. Right, right, I, right, I don't need right. to lose 700000 at one time. <laughs> I'm cool. Like, you know what I mean? Some, I'm not one of them bulls out there. I know I be seeing a lot of these young bulls out here on buying million-dollar cars and shit, cash. I'm uh -huh. not that bull. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Like, I got chicken. I ain't got that chicken. You mm -hmm. feel me? And I'm cool with that. I'm comfortable where I'm at. I'm very, very... Very good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was one point that you was, uh, your content, you was like, yeah, um, just taking back the uh, the Rolex that I rented or some shit you was saying. Oh, like, yeah, that was dope. What was that about? <laughs> that was dope. Um, it was just me trolling, man, for yeah. real. Because I, 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 do you see how I can just talk about all of this shit? Mm -hmm. Like, nobody going to tell you all this shit, bro. Mm -hmm. These niggas on here, I'm the richest, I'm always good, and everything is great at yeah. every time of the year. Shit me. But I, I could talk about that because I'm, I'm real comfortable who I am. I know what I got. I know what I don't got. So, like, if, if niggas talking about, oh, he got a fake watch or whatever, I say, yeah, it is fake. Now what? Mm. <laughs> and what you going to do? Oh, you probably rented that Rolly. I did. I, you probably rented the Rolls Royce. I did. Mm. Now what? It ain't changed nothing. It ain't stopped my emotion. What, what you going to do? Mm. But it's really just to make them self-reflect. 
Mm-hmm. And I literally respond that to, to mm-hmm. folks who, who troll me and shit. I like it, but I was just being funny. And then my content was blowing up. It was going viral. All of them it posts. Was, was. I was like, I'm returning my uh, iMac like computers that shit, to yeah. Apple. That it went too far viral. then. I was like, come on. Hey, yo, it was crazy. <laughs> but it was going viral and I liked it. I mean, I just, I try to have fun with this because we yeah. in a world where Let's just be real. This shit is all programming, like from us. Like we telling people what to think, bro. Yeah. Like when you make mm-hmm. a post, you got a bunch of niggas who gonna say, "See, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying?" And they gonna go tell that to their homies and their girls mm-hmm. and whoever they get into a debate with. They gonna go based on what you said. Mm-hmm. And then you got the women who posting these Justin LeBoy quotes and all of these random pages. You, if you follow any chicks, you see all of them posting the same exact the same quotes. Shit. We being told what to think, yes, bro, what yeah. to do. So in reality, I like to just be a disruptor and just fuck up what everybody got going on sometimes. And like, you know, they, they make us post shit with trending sounds and they making us promote music. I might post some shit and I know it's not gonna go viral because I'm picking a song that I like. Mm-hmm. And just to fuck up the, the swag a little bit. And sometimes that shit go viral and it be mm-hmm. dope. But um, I'm just trying to have fun with this shit, even though we on this like matrix programming. For and sure. I know I gotta, you know, I play into it. I use it to make money and mm-hmm. I encourage y'all to do this. So it's a tool. So use the internet to get your bags. Ladies, mm-hmm. if you find, use that to get your bags. My fellas, if you know how to talk, use that to get your bags, whatever the case may be. But I just use it, you know, as a tool and I understand that. And I don't, I don't, I don't never think of my followers as like my friends. People mm-hmm. think that like, oh yeah, these people really care. Man, they care. They don't care about me, bro. Mm-hmm. I know this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm real comfortable knowing that. And mm-hmm. a lot of people got love for me. They, they thankful for the stuff that I teach and mm-hmm. coach, but I know why they here. You know, I never forget that. Yeah, and the yeah. problem, some of us do. Mm-hmm. And that fuck up our bag, that fuck up our mental. Cause you over here thinking that these people like love you. No, they here for a reason. Mm. You feel me? Like they ain't nobody following me because they they remember me growing up as a kid right, right. and they like, damn, I'm so glad he grew up. No, I got money now and I'm teaching people how to get it. That's why they fucking with me. Mm. If I didn't have it, none of my shit be valid. Yeah. None of that shit would be as take it. It'll be taken with a grain of salt. Anything I said, they'd be like, that mm. shit ain't real. Mm. So I get it. And I just, I just, to keep my mental straight, I'm well aware of this and I keep, I use it as a tool. Right, right. You gotta be confident in yourself. You know, like if yeah. you know who you are, like, can't nobody tell you shit. Yeah, man. We in a different, different world these days, bro. We in, we all cyborgs attached to our phones. Cyborgs. When you don't got your phone, what you feel like? Something missing, right? Man, bro. that should be crazy. You're a cyborg, bro. It's like, like we are part of the like if you don't know what's going on in the world, you like, I'm detached from reality. So that's that's what's happening. So I try to Make sure I jump in and jump out. And I do mm. the same thing with social circles. Like mm. I'm affiliated yeah, yeah. with a lot of people and I got love for everybody, but I jump in there, I say what up and yeah, I slide. Yeah, yeah. I don't- You gotta you know. find that balance. Like some people are just so caught up in it. Like they don't even know that they're in it. You know, so I try to make sure like, okay, I delete Instagram on my phone for like a couple hours or a day <sighs> That's or crazy. two. You know what I mean? I you can do that too. Cause I remember when they took your page and shit, you was yeah. just chilling. I didn't give I was it was like a moment of like, yes. And but you. it was forced though. It's yeah, like it it's forced. like when your shit die, you know when your phone dies, yeah, you yeah, like yeah. out on a beach. That's the first time you enjoy the beach. Yeah, like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like cause your phone yeah, dead. Yeah. Now you gotta got participate you. in life. And that's fucked up. Mm-hmm. But, but I if you know you can get a charger. <laughs> you go go get that, bro. But yeah. if you can't get one, it's, it is what it is. But nah, that's that was dope. I did admire that about you. I was like, he ain't even tripping. He I ain't he lost his pay. The, the first week and a half, I was like, bro, I'm good, bro. That should be like, I felt like a, a it was just like a relief. Like I ain't gotta post shit. I ain't gotta worry about. Com- I ain't gotta do nothing. Oh, cool. That's cool. What if me. you lost everything though? Like nah, YouTube that was different. Too? That was different. Everything. Yeah, but you still had YouTube, so yeah. he can blow his page yeah. back up. You made a new page. It was gonna fuck up the bag. Though. I was thinking like, all right, I gotta get back on it because I, I gotta start making some money. All right, let me right. get back on the shit. And then it was like all my, the network, you know what I'm saying? I got a big network on the grams. Like we gotta understand too, like these platforms are not ours, bro. And one day, like your brand could be gone in one fucking day. Bro, that's all I teach, bro. Like I like when it came to the rental car shit, everybody be like, oh, Mitch Toro, Toro. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about Toro. Uh-huh. Like Toro's a cool brand. I got love for it. It helped me out when I first got started back in 2014. Mm-hmm. Bruh. I ain't seen it since 2017. I don't know nothing. That's I don't up. do nothing on Toro because I don't need it. Mm-hmm. But if Toro were to shut down and y'all got 50 cars on that bitch, and you don't know how to use your own brand, your own Fuck. website, your own marketing, mm-hmm. you're done. So I make sure I teach y'all, use the platforms because it's a tool, yeah. but build your brand. That's yeah. what this is all about. It's not about no LLC. 
It's about building a brand. Mm -hmm. So you got a brand. You got rich and unemployed. You got the pre the rich and unemployed podcast. Uh, fucking all of this, the everything. apparel, everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Finesse is only. You got all of these brands that you built that mm -hmm. people know you. I remember. Rocking the shirt, yeah. motherfucking. Before it was a thing, I ain't gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I remember rocking the shirt though, but that was the idea was so dope that people used to stop me everywhere I went in that job. Mm -hmm. And 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 the reality behind it is that's branded. Mm -hmm. That's past. Nope. If it don't matter if he made a shirt on Printful, they ain't gonna yeah. go to fucking Printful. He can go leave from Printful, make this motherfucking shirt somewhere else, and he's good. Mm -hmm. But if you depend on all of these platforms. YouTube, Instagram, all of that shit, you're done. done. So you got to start. That's why, man, I got to, I be showing people all the time. I be like, my email is 70,000, you know, one of them. And I got another one that's like 15,000. But that's over 100,000 contacts I can get to if I don't got Instagram, if I don't got mm -hmm. TikTok. I don't got, they take my email list. I got a phone number list on, on motherfucking, uh, I got my Colony list that I got all of the yeah, phone numbers yeah, from. Yeah. I got my shit on Go High Level. I got ClickFunnels number. I got everything to where I can at least go back out and make money from people who already shot with me. Right. And everybody know the hardest thing to get is a new customer. So I'm going to go to the niggas who already shot with me. Facts. So that's where, that's what, on, when it came to grind mode, when mm -hmm. y'all talking about when I took that L, mm -hmm. I went right back to the folks who already know what I'm on. Uh -huh. And gave them something even doper, and gave them some value. In exchange for that value, they gave me some chicken. They got me back right. Mm. All right so I just recently left this mastermind you just had, man. And, um, mm. One, it was a dope experience. Um, it was a lot of people in the room that were just hungry, and you was providing so much value to these people. It was like you wasn't holding back nothing. Nah, like it was dope. Um, can you share some of that game that you was Bruh. giving in there, like? I know, Bro, I know they got to come. Shit costs, shit costs money. They got to come to but that. But for them to understand like what's going on in these masterminds, like, bro. I don't you, think they'll know, bro. That's that's the thing. That's why I don't even, you know how like people record. I don't even, I stopped recording my masterminds. Didn't have, because, a, didn't have a cameraman. Then. Because you know why? Because it, it, you can't recreate that experience again. Uh -huh. So even me telling them now, they'll never be able to get mm -hmm. what would happen in that room. It's like, that's the energy. That's where the millionaires be made. So mm -hmm. it's the online coaching. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Courses, cool. But in-person masterminds, that's where niggas is coming. Mm. They really feeling it. I'm letting them be in the mansion, sit in the Rolls Royce. I'm giving them the game, actionable steps, and literally helping them develop their brand. So a lot of people, they don't understand how important it is to tell their story and speak about their brand. Mm. So the first thing I teach people is to at least have a 15 second elevator pitch. You never know who you're going to be. You mm. might be next to this man. Mm. And he might just say, what's up? And because I taught you how to do that introduction, you literally got a contact for life. You got invited to the podcast. You got invited to this networking event just because you sound like you about something. Mm -hmm. Everybody you you seen when they first walk in, they all timid. They yeah. like, oh yeah, you know, I'm just trying to learn. Mm -hmm. I'm like, people treat you how they meet you. Mm -hmm. So every time you introduce yourself, make sure it's like it's number one. So the, the first thing I teach them is that number one thing. Yo, I run the number one whatever. Right, 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 right. Because right. What the fuck? Like, if it's not number one to you, how is it going to be number one to us? That's a fact. So <laughs> I teach them to say that. D them just saying that mm -hmm. one thing literally makes people from not caring about who the fuck they was, mm -hmm. going back to their business to like, yo, I need to follow up with mm -hmm. Jonathan, bro, because he really probably got the number one podcast in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's the separator. Just certain little small word mm -hmm. judo that I teach them. It just literally helps them be able to get more opportunities, have more confidence. And then you seen like there was people who came, they come in three, y'all paying $3,000 it got to be good. Right, you you right. are mastermind number three. It costs you $3,000 to get in there. He come in there. It's his third mastermind. This dude sound like he running the whole operation. When he first walked in this motherfucker. Yo, listen. I literally seen somebody didn't have any confidence in the beginning. And by the time like he stood up and spoke, he just had it in his chest. Like, cause you're like, no, no, no. That's not it, bro. Like, this is how you say it. Let me give you an example. You know what I'm saying? Like, he really stood there and, and showed people how to, like, really present themselves. And by the end of that one dude, uh, he was that... Dude to the left, older guy. I think he had a fuck. What he he had some type. You of, talking about the dude who was doing like the rehab? That was him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He got the real deep projecting yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah. That was his <laughs> second mastermind, which is crazy. It's, it's it's so dope. But yeah, yeah. Him. He he actually pitched a whole different. Thing. He came to Puerto Rico with us, and he pitched a whole different business, mm. and then came there, and I guess he was working on it the whole time and pitched that that one y'all heard about the rehab mm. joint. But he he's a he's somebody who I know will be successful just because. I, he he's using the mirror effect. So yeah. he's using me as his mirror and now he's borrowing my confidence and yeah. I, I just installed it him. Mm -hmm. I believe that you can do this. Mm -hmm. Bro, he called me the other day. Yo, I just secured three contracts with this. this, this. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not shocked. 
Bro, really? Because now he talking though. Like when yeah. he talking to people, just imagine the difference between this on the phone. When you call, let's say you got a cold call, mm -hmm. and now you got to pitch your business to this particular, like he, let's say he do medical, right? He doing rehab facilities. Mm -hmm. So he got to go talk to people at the hospitals to find who do rehab patients, mm -hmm. right? So he call him and say, instead of him saying, uh, 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 hey, um, do you guys got any rehab patients um, that might want to come to our program? He calls and he says, hey, what's going on? This is so-and-so. I got the number one rehab in the whole entire country. Mm -hmm. And we've helped many people not only get back into society, but they've been able to get better jobs, mm -hmm. be able to be actual functionable society members and being able to help other people get out of rehab. Mm -hmm. They like, yo, you know what? Hey, that's dope. What, can you tell me more about it? Yeah, of course. Let me send you this. Just uh, send me this right here and I'll just make sure you get this right away. They, they, they know how to talk now. So now instead of him being on the phone stuttering and not knowing what to say, he got his 15 second pitch yeah. and everybody on time and he's securing mm -hmm. contracts. That's all it's about. People think mm -hmm. it's about, oh, I got to have the right information. Bro, all it is about being the mindset, the mentality and the environment. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go home to the wrong environment with the right information and they can't mm -hmm. use it because they're in the wrong environment. They sleeping mm -hmm. with the enemy. Mm -hmm. All of their homies is like, Oh, yeah, bro, you can't do that, dog. I know this one dude who know two cousins from down the street who know mm. this uncle who did it and it ain't work for him, so it ain't going to work for you. Mm. But no, if you're around our environment, we, we like, no, nah, you can do it. And let me show you how. And mm. that's the difference. That's all it takes. And now he secured a six-figure contract within like two weeks of fucking coming to a mastermind. Spending $3,000. Bro, let's go. <laughs> Get that money up. Let me tell you how important a, a mentor is. Like you said, like borrowing confidence. Like when I paid David Shan twenty five thousand, I literally ner learned nothing about podcasting from him. <laughs> I didn't even care for it, but when I seen him in action, I met him in person, and I seen him do what he do. I was like, "Damn, I can go do this shit too." Man, I'm thinking it's some far fetched. No, That's all I, you needed. I, that man gave me confidence to go out next. Week. I was like, "I'm about to go do podcast you. next week." That's it. I ain't gonna do no calls, no Zoom calls. Fuck all that. That's all. You That's need. all I took from David Shan. Like he was, he know, but like I did learn later on. Like he he a friend now. Like you know what I'm saying? He put me on game. Put me on money plays. But in the beginning, it was straight confidence. And I tell that shit all the time. Like, yo, if I never paid that 25 bands and seen David Shans met him in person, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't it, be it here. Gave, it gave you the confidence to know that you were capable of it, too. And that's somebody that's like, Dave is talented, but you got the talent, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I'm like, look, you know what? That's dope, but I can do that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, yeah. That's, all you need, that's all you need to see. And I know Dave is always going to tell you, you need to start a podcast. Yeah, you need he, to do he, it he, right <laughs> now. <laughs> bro, and he's going to show you that he's making money off the audio. Yeah. He's making money off the video. He's yeah. doing the advertisement. He like, bro, do that. So that's that's my thing. So if if I never seen you do it, bro, because that was confidence for me, too. I was like, I was watching you do your job. I was like, bro, I'm so happy that he was able to do that. Yeah. Especially after paying for the mentorship. Because it validates everything we talk about. Mm -hmm. I was like, this man paid 20 Gs, bro. You can't tell me this man not killing them right now. Mm -hmm. Number one. So that's that's why I got to always show love to you when people ask me. They be trying they be trying to set me up all the time. I was one of the first ones on this job. Uh -huh. They be trying, oh, yo, it was you who... Who, I was like, no, never. That was him. He been had that destiny. So I like to always give you flowers when people say that. That's a that's a setup, bro. That's a, <laughs> niggas is crazy. And they, 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 they want you to like, hell yeah, yeah, man. Nah, it was you definitely blessed the podcast, bro. Man, I, I was lucky here. to be on here at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We can go back and look at that joint and be like, yo, what was boy rocking? <laughs> What you had on the fucking uh I had on nah cause you know what's so crazy you had this motherfucker so hot so I had a different fit. It was you know I like the scully, so I had the scully and I would have wore it on, but it was hot as a bitch. Yeah. Here. So I had to tilt it back and I had the pea coat on, but the the fit, you know, it's it's not cohesive if you ain't got it all the way on. Man, it's, it's level though. We leveled up though from that, bro. <laughs> Both of us leveled up from that, my nigga. That shit. Even your brother, bro. You put your brother in a, in a position where, you know what I mean, like he and my brother's going, bro. You know what I mean? Like that's dope. And sometimes when you put family on, like, they don't see the vision. They don't work as hard as you. And when I look mm. at bro, like, you know what I'm saying? He want to be just like you. You know what I mean? My brother going, bro. He, he really better than me. Let me I'm going to be honest. I'm telling my brother. My brother got two master's degrees in business. He got a master's degree? Two. Two master's degrees in business. Salute. He about to get his PhD. Salute. He looked like the most biggest street nigga you ever seen. Word. Tattoos all the way up his neck. Yeah. The boy is super smart. He was on the dean's list the whole entire time he was in college. So his thing was, 
he was very book smart, but he just didn't have the confidence to go out and do it himself. Mm -hmm. So only all it took was for him to be able to mirror me. Now uh -huh. he going dumb. He run all of our companies. The only reason I can travel and do the coaching and stuff is word, because word. I have him. He runs the rental car businesses. He runs the STR business, which is the Airbnbs. He's able to uh, do the HR. Him and uh, Lee, my girl, Lee and my uh, brother do the HR and they hire and train all of our staff. Man, if I if I ain't have them, I wouldn't be able to do half of the shit that I do. So he is better than me first, and and then it's just like it's it's a gift. That's dope as fuck, yeah, for man. Sure. Damn, because I don't really work with family. I'm just be real. I don't uh -huh. work with family because if you ain't an expert, ain't no point for me to rock with mm -hmm. you. But if you are an expert, we, I, of course, mm -hmm. you feel mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But if we just, I'm trying to build you. I'm trying to make you be this. That's yeah. totally different. So I ain't had to make him. I just I, all he had to do was see my feet. Once he saw my feet moving, he was like, all right, you actually making money? Mm. Heard you, I'm, I'm quitting Grady. <laughs> He's working at Grady. That man said, look, I'm coming with you. But I told him, as soon as I started making this much for my rental car company that I would hire him, and I hired him him and my uh and, and his homie Slim. So we basically- I ain't seen Slim in a minute, where you at? Yeah, he doing his thing, shout out to Slim. <laughs> he doing his thing. It's, it's Slim doing his thing, man. Shout out to him. Nah, I was talking to your brother at the mastermind, and he was just like, "Yeah, yeah, you know, we got this, and we got." This. I was like, and it, it just it, it dawned on me like, nah, this ain't just Mitch. You no. know what I'm saying? Like, this is not just Mitch. No, Mitch got a fucking a power behind him. You know oh, what I mean? For sure. Even when back then, like a year ago, when I came to your last mastermind, it was your brother, and it was Slim. I seen like they they ain't they ain't gotta be the people in the in the spotlight. Right. You you're the face. Right. But it don't just stop there, bro. You know what I mean? Like everybody wanna be the fucking face all the time. Right. They wanna be the person that everybody knows. Like, no, we can all eat. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, for sure. We can eat with you being a silent partner. Like this, it, I wouldn't have this if it wasn't for you. So like understand the position. That's the hardest part though, for people to buy into that. Mm -hmm. But you gotta realize mm -hmm. it's like for real, for real, you can't be number one if you you never been number two. So oh my God. the reality, like you, how do you learn how to be number one without being number two? And I had to do that. I had to wait my turn. I had to learn from people. I had to get young boy. Like they was young boy in me. Mm -hmm. Like that's my young boy type mm -hmm. shit. And I'm like, I know this nigga ain't calling me a young boy. <laughs> but in reality, I, I wasn't in position. I wasn't elite. I didn't earn my stripes yet. And right. you got to respect that time frame yeah. to yeah. really develop yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and and it's nothing wrong with being young boy. I feel like it's yeah. necessary mm -hmm. to get build that hunger up so you don't never want to get young boy again. Yeah, even at the age you're at right now, you still could be young boy. Oh, yeah, I am right now. 50-year-old giving you game on some shit you don't know. Man, listen, I get a mentor every year. or every Depends on how if I surpass a mentor yeah. or catch up to him, how long it takes. But I get a mentor or some type of training every single year mm -hmm. because nobody wants to upgrade the iOS. So nobody wants to upgrade the iOS system. Right, we got to right, upgrade right. our damn phones every year to keep up with the right, apps and shit. Right, 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 but right. we don't want to upgrade our brain. We want to use fifth grade information. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell most people that they 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 operate on a daily basis with a fifth grade education. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what's the math y'all use past fifth grade? We doing long division? No. No, we doing, we doing nice. multiplication, yeah. and subtraction, addition, right? That's, it. That's all we really doing. Mm -hmm. So if we doing that on a day, that's fifth grade. So most people literally past fifth grade, we don't use none of the information. Mm -hmm. So now me in particular, even if you're talking about college, it's remedial. When, when, you, when you go to college and you take your first course, it's remedial courses. I dropped out of college, but I dropped out. But I know how the courses work. And mm -hmm. then you go into your main, your main uh objective, whatever mm -hmm. your course is, your rate. So you gotta realize this. If we don't ever get educated past fifth grade, and we don't use nothing and get no training that we can actually use mm -hmm. past fifth grade. What the fuck are we complaining about being broke for? Man, you stuck. You don't upgrade your then then nigga like so. This is my thing. So we in the on, I'm in the online coaching space. So I love my job. I got the best job in the world. I help people make money. Right. People be hating on niggas in the coaching space, which is hilarious to me. Right. Because you got to think about it like this. Everybody talking about they can Google this shit that we know that we teaching. If you can Google it, why the fuck you not rich yet? You know what I mean? If you can YouTube it, why you not rich mm -hmm. yet? And then the second follow up to that is, if you could, how you gonna Google and YouTube some shit that you don't even know that you don't know? Right. You right, got shit right. that we know we don't know. Mm -hmm. I know I don't know about real estate. I know I don't know about taxes. What about the shit you don't know you don't know? You cannot Google that. Mm -mm. That's the reason why we gotta try to give people direction. And I think about it all the time. Like, what happens if I stop coaching and, and helping people like do do their thing, like do what I've done? I'm already been past it and I'm showing people how to do it. I'm teaching from behind me. Imagine if I stop doing it, then it's gonna be only the niggas who really not about that right. teaching everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then what? 
Now you got nobody that's actually legitimate teaching everybody shit. And you got people literally going and fucking up the whole industry, fucking up the whole market. That's what happened with the, the rental car shit. I'm teaching people the rental car shit. I'm like, look, man, start with a couple economy cars, work your way up. Mm -hmm. Niggas is seeing podcasts and they going out and buying 30 cars in their personal fucking credit, <laughs> fucking up their debt to income ratio. <laughs> now you got five fucking C8s and now people on Toro with a C8 for $100 a day. <laughs> now nigga can't, now anybody who had a C8 who was renting shit for a reasonable cost, three to $500 a night, this over, bro. You better take that shit down to 100 because they fucked up the market. Mm -hmm. So now they can't afford the notes. They crash and whatever the case may be. So it's all, but people like myself, I've been doing it for going on nine years now. So at, at the end of the day, I'm gonna still be around. But if I say, if I stop coaching, what the fuck gonna be left on the internet? But Some bullshit. 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 So I'm, bullshit. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stick it out, even though it's risky. Mm -hmm. So back to the first thing you said about like, um, you know, about gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. I see why, because it's a risk for us. Imagine, like, you got to think about it like this. If I go out and I grab you and all of your followers, I say, you know what? I already been doing real estate deals. I got over $5 million in real estate. Um, I want to show you how to do the same thing. I'm profitable. I'd make $70,000 with one property, $40,000 with another property. I can show you exactly how I did it. I'm going to let all of y'all invest with me. So I'm going to be the lead investor. I'm going to spend $20,000. Everybody else just put $500. I'm going to give y'all equal equity in there. You know how dumb that would be? <laughs> Let me tell you why I would be dumb. So me trying to reach back in the hood and help people out, I end up fucking up my whole entire brand. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? I know as an investor, it's a risk, right? So I spend the 20,000, y'all only gonna spend 500. Now, if these people, if the, the, the market crash, the real estate market crash, it's like old 2008, all of the fucking shit fucks up, right? Mm -hmm. And I just happened to be a person who was investing like everybody else and fucked up my own money mm -hmm. and then theirs. What they gonna say about me if- Scammer. They gonna say I'm a scammer. Scammer. So it's, that's why <laughs> niggas gatekeep, cause they like, yo, I, don't, I wouldn't try to help them. These niggas calling me a scammer because I just did regular business. Mm -hmm. So I didn't invest it and use, I, that's why I don't never do no like crowdfunding, none of that shit. Mm -hmm. Because it's not because I didn't lose money, but it's because my lifestyle gonna still look the same. Yep. Uh -huh. That's why, because I invested, I'm not investing my whole entire life, just like they not. They spend five dollars, they're gonna get that shit back. But they gonna call, they gonna ruin my whole career for trying to help them. So that's why you see niggas get money, move out the hood, start acting funny, mm -hmm. because they 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 gotta protect their brand. And I get both sides. So my thing is you gotta try to you got to respect the niggas who come out here and risk it to try to help people up from where they from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's it's definitely a reason to gatekeep. So I get, oh man, these niggas gatekeepers. Well, mm -hmm. you got to see where you're coming from. Nigga got a lot to lose now. So if he tell you and you fuck it up, and then you got to think about the other side too. So when you're talking about people never ever be in a position to know what investing does for you. Most people come from the hood. We don't know what investing look like. We know about food stamps. Mm -hmm. We know about unemployment. We know about scamming. We know about going to fucking swiping some shit, credit or debit. I'm going to go to the gas station, swipe credit mm -hmm. and be able to fill my tank up with a dollar in account. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we know that type of shit. So we don't know about investing in ourselves to get a return on investment. Everything we buy, we just trying to spend money. We pop mm -hmm. a bottle, we get sneakers, we get shit like that. We don't get no return on investment on nothing. So we don't know about it. So if I never teach y'all and never say investing, because it sound weird mm -hmm. when I'm, it's fucking up with their frequency because they never heard, it don't make no sense to us. Mm -hmm. I came from it. I know what happened when I bought my first mentorship. I was like, what the fuck? $70,000 don't make no sense. But I was, in, I was, he was talking from a different frequency. I had to get on his frequency to understand what he was saying. Now I can see through his lens because I did it and I get it. But just think about it. If I gave all the information free, i.e. YouTube, i.e. Google, that's free shit, right? Nobody going to use it because it's free. You ain't sacrificed nothing for it. That's, that's one. True. Two, you don't, nobody wants free shit. Mm -hmm. People, we might say we want free we shit, but say do you want free food? Like, it's like when you at school, you want free lunch? Nobody really want free lunch. That's the ch cheap shit, right? Bullshit. You don't want the free information, just like you don't want a free haircut. If, it, if I go to my barber and my barber say, yo, Mitch, you the man, you, 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 your money's no good here. You get free haircuts. I'm like, fuck no, I'm paying mm -hmm. because I don't want free effort. Mm -hmm. 
You feel me? When I want to get when I when I when I get my cut, I want, if I say, look, it's six o'clock, I want to cut at six, and you like, oh man, yeah, I got you, but I got this dude, this dude, and this dude in front of you. Well, shit, you said my shit was free. I want the six o'clock slot. Yeah, yeah. Nah, but it's free now, mm. so I don't want that. I pay. I'm paying double, so I can get the right information. So I'll get. I'll help anybody. Mm. You know, every time I get a chance to talk, I'm gonna give some game. But if it's free, I'm saying what I choose to say. But if you pay me. Mm. Get it off. I'm gonna pull a laptop <laughs> on and listen to your questions and curate it for you. It's totally different. Just like any person that's watching this episode, if somebody walked up on you in the street and said, yo, hey, I like what you're wearing, I like your clothes, I like your shoes, teach me how to get all, all the things you got right now, please. Mm -hmm. You're gonna say, get the fuck out of my face. I got shit to do. And if 10 more motherfuckers do it, you're gonna say, yo, this is crazy, man, they getting on my nerves, man. All these people wanna know this shit. Yeah, but if they all have $500 in their hand, you're going to teach their ass. Hell yeah. It's a reality. Mm -hmm. And then the thing is, I did the biggest free conference ever. I did a three-day summit, had over 7,000 people come, literally online for five days with me, free. Gave them free information. I can look up the progress on my platform, Kajabi. I can look up uh, how much they went through the course. Mm -hmm. Nigga, everybody who got that shit for free finished less than 7% of the course, bro. <laughs> What the fuck I'm doing? I'm trying to help you. So it's a, it's a gift and a curse. I got to let you know that you have to invest. There's no way. Mm -hmm. Poor people spend money. Middle class people save money. Rich people invest money. For you to get rich, you're going to have to invest, invest in yourself. There's no other way. I wish people knew that. I wish people understood that concept. Like It's hard. People want free things just handed out to them. And you think your life is going to change by you just getting free information. Like anything that I got free, any course that I got, bro, I'm not... You ain't even looking. I didn't spend shit. no bread. Like any when I spent that twenty five thousand, I feel like bro, I got it. I ain't never spent twenty. I ain't never I gave seen a you. Nigga. He was active. I ain't he never, was at the events. <laughs> I, ain't gave, I ain't never gave a nigga twenty man like here teach me. No, that shit. And even I gave Fitz ten thousand to Damn. Teach me crypto. Damn. I was so eager to learn that shit because I spent the money on it. But if he if I would have reached out like, hey bro, can you teach me crypto? I would have bullshit because I ain't got nothing invested. And people right. just don't see that. Like you got to invest something. You want something from me. And you want it totally for free. Like, and I'll be trying to explain to like the people I see in my men's group. How you you expect me to show up every week? You expect me for every week, give you all this information, have people come, do these events, and you want that for free? Man, get the fuck out of here. People, people don't understand it though. They they don't understand even a course is not even free to make. Hell no. It's not even free to make. That shit costs in every month. For me to have it on my platform, 200 a month. For me to even uh, film it, I got to record the month. I got to pay a fucking videographer. Mm -hmm. I got to have the content, the copy written for it. All this different shit. Especially if you got a good course with actual citable information. Mm -hmm. But it costs me to even hold it on a platform for you to see it. For me to have Zoom calls to teach you. It costs me. I got to pay Zoom every month. Yeah. You feel me? And I, and I got over 200,000 fucking followers. What the fuck I'm gonna do if all of them want to get information at the same time? Like, oh yeah, let me pick the most freest one I can find. What the fuck? The freest one. <laughs> yeah, it don't even make sense. So they don't, they don't, people don't really understand it. It's like I'm trying to do it. I want to help because the reason I charge is to help. Mm -hmm. I could, if I want to look, this, I tell you this all the time. If I wanted to get rich off mentorship, I charge a hundred dollars. I got two hundred thousand followers. Y'all do it. Hundred dollars, mm -hmm. two times two hundred thousand, like twenty million. Mm -hmm. hey, they will pay it, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all don't think these motherfuckers will pay me hundred dollars? I can put them on a payment plan. 25, 25, 25. <laughs> hey, every every plan. follower I got, I will really be able to convert them to a hundred dollar product at some point uh -huh. during during my lifespan. Mm -hmm. So that'd be twenty million dollars. I want to get rich off mentorship. I just charge a hundred, but I'm not going to get the results that I want. I want people to actually be able to go out and have the results that I'm getting. You're not going to get it from spending hundred because you ain't going. You're going to have to have the operation cost in your business going to cost more than that. Mm -hmm. For you to be a millionaire, you got to be willing to spend a million. These niggas ain't going to pay for no ads, no marketing. They want the whole free. Just think about the effort that you're putting in. Look, yeah. I want to have a business like Rich and Unemployed, but I don't want to pay for nobody to see me because I'm not known. <laughs> nobody knows me. Mm. Nobody knows my podcast, my face, my name, nothing. I don't want to pay nothing to be seen. You, how the fuck you gonna compete with niggas who paying? You can't. I'm paying. <laughs> Nigga, I'm, told, I'm telling y'all, you're not competing with niggas who got SEO. They yeah. paying for ads. They got. They doing influencer marketing. They doing collabs. Mm -hmm. They paying. Nigg niggas has got. They busy, man. Niggas got a whole group of niggas who understand the value of a platform and having a whole bunch of listeners, followers, and viewers. This nigga got fucking clientele. Mm -hmm. How I'm gonna come and bump all of these niggas out the way? Man, that shit crazy. It man. don't even make <laughs> sense, bro. That shit it don't crazy. make sense. I'll be like, y'all, like we. It, but what people are really saying though, I'll be asking people all the time. I'll be like, look. What do you call a person that only comes if it's free? 
You gonna go, we gonna go out of town, but only if it's free. You gonna come to the club, only mm-hmm. if it's free. We gonna go to dinner, only if it's free. What do we call that person? Nigga, that's what they be. That's what they are. Yo, Mitch, I really, I'm a big fan of you, man. I really want to learn how you do what you do, but only, only. if it's free. <laughs> that's it. I really, really want to be the next millionaire, but only if I can get it for free. That's exactly what they're saying. That's what they're saying. Exactly and they don't understand. Saying. You got to put it in a perspective where they don't, un- they don't hear how it sounds. You don't even respect me mm-hmm. as the person teaching. You think yeah. I got time to do that? I got employees. I got obligations. I got family. I pay for my mom all, everything. I just pay my mom motherfucking bankruptcy. I pay for her mortgage. I pay her everything. I'm, I don't got no time to just chill with you. I got to go work. Mm-hmm. So if you want me to chill with you and stop doing what I'm doing, it got to make sense for both of us, not just you. So I'm going to spend my time helping you get rich. And then my, nine times out of 10, if it's free, they wasting my time. I already know that. I'm going to sit there and talk to him. Hey, look, pull your credit report. Do this. Hey, start this campaign. Download all of these websites. You're going to need all of these websites. All of them cost money. Every one. You're going to need Active Campaign. It costs money. You're going to need Kajabi. It costs money. You're going to need ClickFunnels. It costs money. You're going to need Go High Level. It costs money. You're going to have to run ads. That costs money. But they wanted to get me to teach them this for free. So imagine what they're going to do when they time to run the ads and shit. The shit ain't even going to work. Damn. You ain't going to pump it. You, nobody knows you. You got to get all these people to leave you testimonials and reviews. You better do that for at least six months. You ain't going to be making money for six months. But once you do what I said do, after six months, you're going to be rolling in the dough. You going to do it? Nah, it ain't free, right? I got you. You feel me? So that's just the reality. And I had to learn that myself. Yeah. Like I've been through that whole entire process myself before I made my first six figures, before I made my first seven figures. I literally had to go through the process of having to pay somebody for information to get in rooms Mm -hmm. to learn from a nigga who taught me the sauce. A nigga taught me the sauce i'm talking about i paid 70 g's financed it as soon as i paid it two weeks later five hundred thousand. One day nigga gave me the sauce i left with that shit ran it up i've been running up ever since i remember that i know exactly what play you talking about nigga i know exactly what play you talking about nigga, <laughs> nigga hey <laughs> look i've been running it up ever since ever bro. since look think about and i've been paying for information ever since that because you know how valuable it is if you just paid seventy thousand and it made five hundred thousand imagine if i if i keep spending this shit you know what I mean? But just think about all of the shit you just listed, right? Kajabi, active campaign, you know what I'm saying? All the shit that you had to pay. You tell the people, hey, listen, this is how you fucking get rich. This is how I did it. And they can look at it like, bro, I don't know. I'm just telling you the fucking blueprint. They don't believe it. They don't believe you just really it's went too through free. that. You didn't pay all this for six months. You didn't goddamn have people uh, 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 testimonials. For, you didn't, they don't believe it. Why wouldn't you believe it? You think I'm going to just cap you down? How do you think I got here? How you think I got to my boy Wall Street Trapper said something. We was at the uh, we was at my boy Marvin Mitchell uh, and Ash Cash and Storm Leroy they event they conference and um, he was like, man, a nigga is underneath a post of a person who made three hundred and fifty million, mm-hmm. arguing with him, telling him he wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, that's a fact. They be literally mm-hmm. arguing with me. And you got to think about it. And when, when I really break it down, on, on, this only going to make sense for the people who know who I am and who I'm, who I'm with, who I'm affiliated with. Me and all my niggas, all of us, we got million dollar and $10 million click funnels plaques. Mm-hmm. All of us. All of us got one. Since all of us got one, I want y'all to think about this. I paid to learn about click funnels. I paid 20 G's for a nigga to teach me how to do the funnels and how it makes sense, how I can do the email blast and pay for other people to let me drop an ad in their email list. Mm. I paid for this sauce, right? And I made, I have three plaques, million dollars, like t- a two combo award, click mm. funnels plaques. All my homies got two, three, four of them, right? Mm. Fucking him 500 got a $25 million joint. Mm. Yo, <laughs> but I'm just saying, all of us got it. Mm. So all of us wrong. All of us wrong. <laughs> all of us, all of, all of us paid for it though, uh-huh. right? All of us paid for it. And my thing is, there's another little thing that we should debunk on here. This is a good show to do this. People be talking about this core shit, like as like like a nigga try to assassinate your bag by saying, oh, he made a million off courses. These niggas is weirdos. I be like, if a course can make you a millionaire, what's stopping you? Go make it. Mm -hmm. Go make 10 of them. It ain't the course. I'm sorry to tell you. You got to have a strategy. You got to have a bag. You got to have a skill set. You got to be knowing what you're talking about. It's not it's not going to just happen for anybody. If it is. Everybody who watches podcasts, go out there and make a course. You should become a millionaire overnight. Mm-hmm. The fact is, it's going to take more than that. Mm-hmm. You, the same thing I took in my rental car business to make a million dollars, I did. I applied the same exact principles to the online course and coaching program shit. Same principles, hustle, execution, and grind. Same thing, supply and demand, right? But people go and bake it like, oh, 
man, they only rich off courses. Who gives a fuck? You better learn how to do that then. Fucking right. <laughs> you better learn how to do that. It don't matter where it came from. They got rich off real estate. He got rich off real estate. This nigga had to sell real estate. What the fuck? This nigga had to sell the course to make money. What the fuck? Why? What's stopping you? But that's the problem with us. We so busy trying to worry about what makes something dope and what's up. Man, look, what's going to work? What, I don't give a what damn. Is working? If it, nigga, I don't care what we doing. So that's the reality. I don't, if it's working, it's working. Oh, <laughs> fuck me up with that one. <laughs> what it was? <laughs> um, fuck, nigga. What were we stopping for? No, we wasn't stopping. He was just, he was just letting me know it was at a, it was. At oh a, shit, say that. <laughs> but yeah, no, man, that's that's my thing, man. People try to count people's pockets. I mean, and it's not even about a broke thing. That's we should fucking start off with that. Niggas be talking about oh niggas who. Man, any nigga who got motion don't never be hating. Nah, that's cap. Mm. Niggas with money be hating. Mm. Niggas with money be jealous. Mm. And they be saying a little hater shit whenever they get a chance to get it. It's just mm. a, it's just a, uh, I think it's an insecurity thing. It's something. It don't matter what it is. Me in particular, I always been smooth, but I get it. I get why other niggas be worried about me though. I get it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I get it. I get why other niggas worry about you. You be you got a podcast where you insecure. got all of the flyest joints on here. You talking to them. You doing your thing. You living. You living a dream that you you made in your mind. You manifest it. I get why niggas will feel away. It don't even if a nigga got money. It be rich niggas over here like man, this nigga, dude. Man. I think they come up with some shit in their mind. You know, they just make up shit in their mind like some some imaginary beef or some shit. You know, like they, they just need a reason. Because, bro, if you winning, like, why are you hating? Where the negative energy coming from? It got to be something like this. Shit, it's internal. Thin. It's internal. It's within, you know what I mean? But that hating, it, it don't it don't discriminate. Mm. Niggas be talking about, yeah, go get a bag. Niggas will get a bag. Don't hate. I'm like, Psh. Yeah. These yeah. niggas with these bags be hating. Yeah. <laughs> so it is what it is. But, yeah, like like I said, man, it's just, we gotta you got to figure out how to be able to live your, your dream life that you want. And don't worry about nobody else. Like, it's hard not to. I get mm. it. Mm. But my nigga, like, if you really stopping and thinking and putting energy into a whole nother person, weirdo vibes. I'm sorry. Weirdo. Don't, you know what I mean? Mitch, what's next for you, though, bro? Because the level up has just been crazy. And I want to know, like, what do you plan on doing, like, the next five, ten years from now? That's a good question. Um, Man. Like, when the fuck you think about retiring? What? Retiring? I I don't know no billionaires or millionaires that's retired, so I don't, I can't do it. So I don't see myself yeah. retiring. Um, but as far as uh you know career wise, I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I'm just gonna go where wherever you know whatever vehicle is gonna take me to me making nine figures. Uh, I, I did ten million, so I'm trying to get the nine figures. It's gonna be a, a large jump. So I I got to say that's so gracefully. I just made I made ten M's. So, nah, yeah, it's dope. And that's revenue. Yeah, yeah. That's revenue, too, because these niggas be capping. Yeah. <laughs> but that's 10 million in revenue. I haven't netted 10 million, but I did. I, that, that is a milestone for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I want to make nine figures. So I'm, I'm just going, you know, I just I took my I got golf lessons. Me and my girl went and did golf lessons. So I'm about to go do my thing. So basically, I understand the importance of building relationships with people and exposure equals expansion. So I'm going to go out on that golf course. I'm gonna join a couple uh, golf clubs and, and network out there, and I think that's gonna lead me to that non-figure situation. That's a fact. Yeah. What made you? What made you want to get in a relationship? Like, you seem like the playboy type. Even though, like, that's I've, crazy. I've known you to have, you didn't. I didn't know you to have maybe two or three girlfriends. That's not even three. Not even three, just two. Two for show. Sure. Two for show. Sure. And <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Your demeanor, your aura gives off playboy. Why? Why does it do that? Is that uh, true? We got you. Got to start a poll on this I video. Swear to God, I just, I don't know. It just that's the vibe you're giving. But you always in a fucking relationship, which is not a bad thing. That's I crazy. For that. Well, I don't want that to be on my name, and I hope my girl don't watch this and feel away. Was that the girl? At the but basketball? yeah, my girl. Wherever you see me, my girl is there. Exactly. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. Now, nah, um, I I prefer companionship, but I also so in reality, everybody wants the freedom. And the compatible, like the companionship, mm -hmm. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Well, I do. So mm -hmm. that's me personally. I like the companionship, but I also like the freedom. But um, in particular, I feel like all of the people who I admire, who I look up to financially and like lifestyle wise, they married. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it, it gives you stability 
And at this point in my life, that's what I want. I'm not really trying to be running around worrying about, and it's risky. To be honest, it's super risky being mm-hmm. single, mm-hmm. Um, especially when you got something to lose. You mm-hmm. got you a target, you can slip up, accidentally do something that you're not supposed to do with the wrong person. And me in particular, uh, I, I found somebody that it makes perfect sense for me. Like she she definitely take care of the boy. Like she's yin and yang for what, how I move. So it was perfect. I could tell just off like the, just the vibe, like she works for you, right? She don't work for me. She work with me. She work with me. Um, <laughs> she um, don't work for me. She work with me. <laughs> but my joint's super solid, man. It's dope. I I, I think it's. It, it was lucky. It, how is it? Um, like her working with you because don't you have a fear of like, yo, what if this shit don't work out? She got all my personal information. She know everything and. Like, yeah, that's a, that's the biggest risk. I, I tell I talk about that all the time when picking somebody you date and they can the easiest person can take it from. It's always gonna be an inside job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Somebody from inside the castle could tear everything down. Mm-hmm. But her, like, just her character, I don't think, you know, it would be nothing like that. Even if it didn't work out, you know, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. But it, even if it were to not work out, I don't think in her character, from what I know, that that would be a problem. Um, just based off of what I know about her. But that could happen. That's a risk. That's a part of, part of life. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. me taking a risk got me to where I am today. And I think she's a good risk to take. Hey. So that's just. Hey, uh, that's dope. That's all right. Yeah, she, I'm that's just hard. saying, she's that's smooth. Dope. I don't even want to cap y'all down. Like, my girl not super raw. Like, yeah. I don't even. Like, you know how, like, we all got an instinct, a monkey on our back that make us naturally, you know, be one of doing what men do. Mm-hmm. Bro, I don't even be on timing. Like, because they not raw. Like, these yeah, chicks is. Yeah, yeah. Chicks are raw, but the chicks who I be seeing, they not raw like my girl. Like I ain't never seen nothing like it. She raw. She the, the shit that she do, it's nuts. How long have been together? We only been going on seven months now. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Not that it, it's crazy that the fact that she works with you, and you talking like this, this you giving her this much respect at seven months. Yeah, she raw, bro. Man, that's dope, man. I'm, I'm it's good. Here. It's gonna be. It's gonna make for good content because now everybody gonna be in the comments like, "Oh, she doing this shit. That shit gonna be making mm. for a fire." <laughs> you know what I mean? But no, I mean, I think it's just a, to to me, it's just alignment. So, mm. like people, like you, you talk a lot about dating and stuff on your show, and um, that's what's popular right now. So, yeah. whatever you talk about, anything controversial to come to dating, it's gonna go crazy. But in reality, I think the problem that most of us is having is like lack of privacy. So these women talking on these shows, they sabotaging themselves a lot of the time in a lot of men's eyes because they are saying things publicly that never should be shared. Right. And I think because they do that and they don't understand it, they'll never be able to, you know, wrap their mind around why they not being wiped up and mm-hmm. taking, you know, longer than three month relationships and shit like that. But they say some wild shit. They yeah, they, they willing some... to say it. And, mm-hmm. and just even about money wise, like I don't know no rich bull who would t- t- talk to it like wipe up a joint who went on a podcast and said and I'm gonna take I'm it's not one size fits all so it's not everybody but I don't I've never met a rich dude who would say oh man that chick she only day seven figure earners I'm gonna go get her I've never met that nigga mm-hmm. every nigga is like we you trying to smash that and you slide mm-hmm. and a lot of us have like fake like uh, options like women could think they got options when a dude will smash. That don't mean nothing. This is not wifing y'all. Mm. And that's the reality. And it's just only because I think the privacy thing. I think that's just one aspect that if we change that, we'll have a lot more relationships. Hmm. You know, these chicks just, just, just be quiet. Hmm. Shut them off. Because hmm. if I see, if I ever see my girl interview, <laughs> Like dub. <laughs> <laughs> I seen a uh, viral post. Uh, y- y'all might have seen it with a little John. They was asking her like, "Oh, how much your man got to make?" And she said, "Whatever he make." Yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? She was like, "Whatever he make, we make. We we together." That so, was a dope. Answer. Solid. And I so and I said the only I commented on that. I was like, the only thing she could have said better was not do the interview at all. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's the for only sure. thing she could have did better because she held it down. Because people were trying to trick you into yeah. even the men. The uh-huh. men is trying to make you say. Mm-hmm. What what do he what he gotta really make? Of mm-hmm. course she's gonna say what she prefer, mm-hmm. but the only advice I would give to women is like you can date whatever you want. You could date seven figure earners, eight figure earners, but you ain't gotta say. You don't gotta cl- put it out to the world. Mm-hmm. Just date who you like. Yeah, who you like <laughs> if you right. just only date seven, we gonna see what's up. But if you got a man, I talk to, gotta make seven figures. He gotta make eight figures. Yeah. Like 
people just want a voice too. They just they couldn't they can't wait for their turn to speak. Like they heard so many other people say it, like they can't wait to die. Well, well, huh, it's my turn. Well, yeah, I can't date a nigga that make a hundred thousand. No, I can't do it. Uh -uh, yeah, man. but that, nobody knows how much nobody make. Mm. Y'all not checking bank accounts. Right. You know what I'm saying? You could look like you could clap all day. You know what I'm saying? You could really have a Rolls Royce and some chains and really be living just that. It, bro. You live in check to check off that, bro. I'm not. I'm paying the motherfucking car note and I got a crib and that's it. I can't even goddamn pay for trips or dates or none of that I'm shit. I'm knowing. Niggas be capping, bro. And that's the thing. So it's just, it's all superficial. Mm -hmm. And in reality, those women, like I said, I don't want, you could date whatever you want. Like, I don't care. Like me in particular, I like a certain type of joint. Like a, I like a chick to carry herself a certain way. And I should go date that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I did, I should date what I'm aligned with. And, and then these women should date who they align with. But what we come on here on these shows and do is say, I hate when they do it. Like, well, then don't date that boy. Thanks. That's that's how simple it would be. Mm -hmm. It's we it's not like it's a lack of great women or a lack of great, it's a lot of great niggas out here. There's a lot of great women out here. But the problem is we so caught up on dating the niggas who we don't want to fuck with and the chicks we don't want to fuck yeah. with. You know what I mean? Like just be what's in alignment. You ain't gonna never complain about a chick that's in alignment with you. Hell no. Nah. So yep. me, you know, all these niggas like, man, these chickens showing too much on on, on the gram. And like, bro, why are you talking to her? They say all that shit and still go fuck with them, man. They yeah, say but they going to smack because we know we going. Like, yeah. That's that's the thing. And that's that's something that should be talked about. Like the women got to realize it's not about that you can't pull. Every dude is going to smack. Dude Every just, dude. Dudes just smacking grizzly bears at night, that's dog. A fact. When you lead that's a, a when fact. you lead a club in the lounge 2, 3 a.m., niggas is leaving with Vespucia, Shrek. You know, matter. They trying to knock whatever down. You just another one that's fired that they gonna knock down and slide. I'm I know a bull. He, they, they, he'll he'll grab a bag for you. He'll buy you a bag off the top first mm -hmm. time he meet you. Just a smack. Just a smack. Because <laughs> when you for real for real, when you rich, bro, them, them Gucci Bluey bags shit ain't nothing for real. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be real. But they'll buy that bag just to just let me hurry up and speed this joint up. I'm yeah, trying to get that yeah. time machine. Uh -huh. <laughs> speed that joint up just to smack them and then slide. And they'll take that as oh yeah, these dudes want me. I'll be like. That's mm. every every joint. You at every joint position. Mm. And a lot of women, they're not realizing how many women it is in the world. Like it's like an unlimited selection. And it's like not these women not rare. The ones who come making those complaints. That's why it's, it's heard so often, because it's not even rare. So you see all these women saying six and seven figure arms. They want six foot and above or whatever. That's not rare. That's what that's what's the substance there? Mm -hmm. If all the chicks is looking the same, they dressing the same, they want to be not not everybody. Like if that's the case. And everybody complaining about the same complaints. They're not rare. Mm -hmm. So that should tell you something. Maybe I should do something different. Maybe I should move a little bit to the right. Because the left looking weird. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That's my opinion on that. But it, it's something that should be talked about. Because I mean, I'm, I'm a relationship boy, so I'm going to be chilling. Listen, I seen this man in action when he was single, man. <laughs> dog. Not a, not a dog ass nigga, but like. No, nah, nah. The way he. The, but listen, bro. <laughs> He ain't playing, bro. He see something he want, he going. Like, man, I'm glad I'm off the streets. But I seen one of your posts, I mean, one of your videos, and that made me so happy. What was it? Like, uh, it was one of them Jones who was talking about- The bitch was cheating? Oh, no, nah, not uh, that one. Oh, we, well, that one, that shit, we got like, yeah. how many thousand views, like comments on it? They comment today. today. <laughs> like, that that one was viral. But that just, even that, like, that was nuts, bro. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. She said, I mean, she, you set her up in like maybe four different ways. So shot, <laughs> bless Shorty Heart, man. She uh, she just was doing what she she wanted to do. But you was like setting her up. Though. I'm going to give her that. This man up. said, <laughs> you had somebody waiting on the side? <laughs> <laughs> she said, a whole bunch of niggas. <laughs> Shorty said she had a whole bunch of niggas that waiting on the side. Sad. But yo, she wasn't playing. She was like, y'all are creatures of habit. Like, just humans. It's human beings. We all creatures of habit. So if the habit break, you'll be able to notice it, even with a chick. That's why you got to choose the right one. Because, like, you can't just be choosing, like, no no, no Instagram celebrity chick, bro. Because they mindset fucked up. You re Like, I stay away from them type. I don't even really try to fuck them type of shorties. Like, them chicks that everybody go after. You know what I mean? The bitches that's been in the spotlight. I stay away from them. I school mm. the fuck. But I'm not, I'm not wifing none of that. It just I don't know who. Good. But who's wifing them? Yo, but niggas look at that like. They the it girls like they 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 want them so bad, but when you finally get with them, it's like man, this they shit always nothing. available, bro. Yo, they always single. They always single too. They why why y'all so bad? Y'all showing your ass all the they time. They always available. What's a bad joint that's like super bad that everybody be trying to be on that's not available? That's not available. Yeah, that's taken. Uh, 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 uh. 
Well, now nah, I'm gonna say Lori Harvey. She she's, she's like, not available either. She's not available, but like she, it's, it's always a gap. Like she be she be like single for like two months. I mean, she she is available. My bad. She just broke up with the bull. Yeah, she's available. They always available. <laughs> they always available. Not even. But I ain't, I ain't even gonna put Lori. Lori moves smooth. I mean, we don't. She don't talk too much. So I respect that. Lori, she dating, she she dating a lot of people in the limelight, but honestly, she moves smooth considering. Yeah, but it just you that, don't hear her really talking too crazy. Yeah, she ain't gonna say nothing. She, she had just one moving. interview. She just, she had one interview. She ain't that was it. Yeah, she moving. She she she, moving she, she had her to. she had her one interview where she said she's the prize. Yeah, she that was it. That was it. That man. was it. She let she it really go. she just go date and she really kind of private with it, honestly, but. Even though they still look at her like a hoe, even though like she jumped nigga to nigga, every girl is jumping from nigga to nigga. Yeah, and, I mean, and I think it's rapidly. just the thing. I think what for society, I think society is looking at it because they can see, they can visually mm -hmm. see. Uh -huh. who they she's can dating. see it. Yeah. So you know, most chicks you don't know all of the dudes that they dated. I'm sure right. they dated way more dudes than Lori Harvey do, mm -hmm. but um, she's dating celebrities. Yeah. And she's famous, so anybody she date gonna be on a limelight. So you can literally count her bodies. You I know they smacking. The That's the thing. You, you, you know, know what I mean? You know they smacking. <laughs> so, they smacking. Uh, but I think you know, I think you know she kind of moves smooth for real. Like you got, it's a lot of ways that she can move. Yeah, yeah and yeah. she not moving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And considering who she was talking to, she's not moving right, right, crazy. Right. She ain't moving crazy. She could be like, yo, I could be doing. Da, 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 da. I told you, that's what. That's the worst case scenario, bro. Like that's that's my that might be one of my worst fears. Like your John just spicy on the street, and that was the John who you wiped up mm -hmm. and, and had out mm -hmm. on the street. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's mm -hmm. worst case scenario, mm -hmm. bro. Mm -hmm. When I be seeing these Johns do this today, boys, man, I be like, yo, I ain't <laughs> even going name drop, but I be sad, bro. I be looking, I be like, that's worst case scenario. I watch stay from them, bro. I stay away from them. I stay away. I get the chicks that just moved in town. Oh, like got like a couple thousand followers. I get them <laughs> chicks. You know what I mean? Name and name and why, why don't people? Why don't women understand why dudes get their chick from out of town? Because they ain't been touched like that. I ain't gonna say like no. They ain't been them. touched by nobody in your city. Facts. And you don't gotta hear none of her bad stories because she's not from around mm -hmm. there. So she can start a clean slate and your mental can be clean. People don't understand that. That's mm -hmm. why most niggas get their chick from out of town. No, but they don't want nobody that everybody talks to. Women be really. Misunderstanding that one, it'd be sad. It'd be sad. <laughs> it'd be sad, bro. Like I just made a post too, like maybe a couple weeks ago. I was like, "Yo, listen, y'all girls, y'all get naked online for no reason. Like, y'all not getting paid for it. Y'all think that y'all gonna get a man by that? No, we just attracted sexually. We just want to fuck at the in the moment. They have like, like we're not gonna stay there. We're not gonna stay there. You know what I'm saying? Like if everybody can see your ass and your titties, I'm only here for the moment. We're not wifing that shit up. That's why I hear all y'all single for real. Well, you gotta, well, it's nothing really to complain about, man. Just let them be out here. Yeah, oh, no, I'm not complaining. Yo, <laughs> keep being naked. Hey, yo, I'm yo. Let, that, that's the thing, but that's the thing we gotta do. Like, we gotta let these joints who wanna be spicy and on a gram and very, like, uh, sexually promiscuous, let them do their thing and let the dudes who like them talk oh, to them. I love it. <laughs> that's get, my keep, thing. That's what we gotta naked. do. The joints who spicy, Shorty, do your thing. Keep keep doing that and date them niggas who date spicy chicks. And All that's right. that's the that's the only thing we got missing because they ain't fucking with no niggas from where I'm from. Mm-hmm. Um damn, bro. It's one in the morning. Facts. <laughs> All right. What what you got next? What you want to tell the people? Where your next mastermind? That's crazy. You know what I mean? When is it? <laughs> uh yo, um, just follow me on the ground, push man, Mitch. Just out of love for my boy Finesse, man. Anybody who tapping with me, I get y'all fifty percent off for anything that's in my bio. So just DM me the word push. Literally, as soon as you DM me the word push, I send you a link, get you tapped in. We we'll make sure you make some money, not nothing funny. You feel me? Call it a day. And that's that. You feel me? Money making, Mitch, man. On God, two times on Sunday. Hey, that's crazy, bro. We ain't talking about no car rental. We ain't talking about really no business. Like, this, we ain't need to. Shit. We did that already. It's real shit. We did that already. We got we got to be having them conversations like that that Facts. people need to be hearing. Facts. Listen, go watch the the, the uh, episode two years ago. Y'all go learn some game from that shit. You know what I'm saying? This had plenty of gems in it. But if y'all want to learn about some money and all that shit about car rental space, go back to that episode. This wasn't for that. <laughs> Word. Word. And and my man's got a podcast too. Oh yeah, go yeah, check yeah. out the podcast. He's dropping gems daily, and he got the Patreon. 
How much you charge them? Hundred dollars. Yeah, hundred. It's, it's cheap for some game. Yeah, yeah. My Patreon is overloaded though. I don't really. I don't even got to promote it. It's it's fire like that. So yeah. they get this. So since you can't like some people can afford the mentorship and some people can't. Yeah. So the ones who can't, they can see the replays Facts. of my actual mentorship calls in my Patreon group. So it's dope. Oh, it's a good. It's a little cheat code for you. I just learned something. I need to do that. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Yeah, see, Appreciate they can't you. ask the questions, but they get to see what's what's popping. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Reaching out to the podcast. Until next time, stay rich.